Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton News Daily. Everton have been linked with a potential new suitor to buy the club today. Well, when I say linked, it's actually more than a link. John Texter, who is the uh, who is a Crystal Palace, well, he's the Crystal Palace part owner. He owns about forty three percent. He's actively trying to sell. His shares in Crystal Palace. He has faced somewhat of a battle to take over the club fully. Um, and it seems like he won't be able to take over the whole club. Where have we heard this story before? Um, and it seems like he's trying to use a company called Rain to sell his shares in the football club. And uh, if so, would like to uh, certainly investigate the possibility of taking over Evan. He has spoken to The Athletic and the New York Times. He has said, yes, I've I've had conversations around buying Everton with the existing constituents, different groups, different lenders, different equal holders. I've asked them, is there a way to solve all of this confusion and address everyone's problems? I am very open-minded to it. But I don't want to come into a situation where I'm not really welcome. I'm watching it, but Triple Seven still has a contract. There are people that are close to the club who care a lot about it, who are also investing. There's a guy running it, Farad Mishiri, who's still calling the shots. Maybe we we're unequivocally positioned to solve a lot of the problems for people. But we're just watching it right now because there are other people who already own pieces of that club who are also who also want to figure it out. I'm looking at that, but it's quite confusing and some things have to clean up. <laughs> You're telling us. Evan represents the best of English football. The struggles, the glory, the want. I love that it's out of London. Everyone should want to buy Everton right now. That kind of club is what I'm referring to, where the risk and the reward of your relationship and community is so great and you could come in, make pro promises and keep them. How great would that be to take these great English clubs back to, to sort of glory? We're also looking at other opportunities and we don't need to jump right out of Palace, right into something that, that would be a mistake. I suspect that the problem with Everton is that I won't. it won't be available by the time we will be ready for it. You don't own... You can't own two clubs in one league and we're not going to rush the situation at Palace, no matter how good another opportunity looks. So John uh, John Texter, who obviously owns other clubs as well, he owns Botafogo, he owns uh, Lyon in um, France. I think he owns a Scandinavian club as well. Um, obviously, it very interesting words from him there. Very interesting words on the situa situation amongst uh, at Everton as well. You know, you know <laughs> what he said in that interview is a lot more than what anyone else has said about Everton for a while who were actually in the club you know the idea that the other people involved um, want to do something the fact that there are so many things to clean up um, you know even him saying that by the time he gets himself sorted he doesn't believe Everton will still be on the market um, all very very interesting uh, obviously this guy is is uh, I think he's pretty much a billionaire um, and obviously, as I said, this has had this got experience um, owning other football clubs. Whether he's the right fit for Everton, we don't know. Um, but is he the first of many? Is he is he just trying to sell his shares in Crystal Palace and is using Everton as a uh, as a way, you know, or is it, or does he not want to sell his shares in in Crystal Palace? Does he want to get the the control of Crystal Palace and use use the link to Everton as a way of as a way of maybe forcing people at Palace to give him control, the threat of him leaving could be could be something that he uses. I don't I don't know. Just some very interesting words from him, and we'll have to see whether it goes anywhere. But he has popped his head uh, above above the parapet, and and 
Yeah, it's very, very interesting. And as I said, it's not just links. He has, he has said those words. They are his words. So, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Everton um, obviously haven't haven't uh, made a statement about it. Farad Mashiri has not come out and said anything about it. Although Farad Mashiri has, speaking, has spoken sorry, to the FAB this week. Um, and the FAB put out a statement last night. There wasn't a lot in it. Um, basically, Farad Mashiri said his hands are basically tied till the contract with Triple Seven runs out. That will be this time next week. He said there have been um, some unsolicited approaches for the club. Now, whether John Texter is one of those approaches, we we won't know. And he hasn't said that himself. He sort of said he sort of indicated that they've looked at it and maybe talked to some people involved. But is that an approach? I don't know. Um, but I think a lot, a lot will hinge, or certainly a lot more will, will be revealed either this time next week or, or the 1st of June when Triple Seven, you would imagine with everything that's been um, said about them and we've heard about them with their other clubs, will that will be the end of them, you would suspect. I can't see how it would go any further than next week. I can't see where they'd get more money because they just seem to have run out of money. I mean, it was very surprising that they put money in this month and it was extended to the 31st of May. But you would imagine on the 1st of June, we'll know some more, or certainly the following week after that, uh, we'll start learning more and maybe more of these people will come out. It is interesting that he said something. It's just that in in the in all of our experiences of, over the last few years, the people who tend to talk about buying football clubs aren't necessarily people who do buy football clubs, the people who buy normally just come out of nowhere and put their money down and buy the football club. Uh, and certainly that's what we saw with Farad Mishiri as well when he came in. Um, the people who talk about buying football clubs just generally aren't the ones who do it. Um, who knows, will this guy book the trend? He'd have to sell his shares in, in Crystal Palace first, and who knows how long that would take. Um, obviously Palace look like a club that are on the up, uh, after their end of the season, but they've really struggled to build their new main stand at Sellers Park, and it, it just seems to be a bit of a chicken and egg situation. They want that built, but that's maybe stopping them from getting new uh, new investment. Um, but can they get new investment till it's till it's built? I don't know. We've got a brand new stadium that is getting built, um, and will attract new people to the football club. So. It's a very interesting development, and whether it goes anywhere or not, I just find the things she said fascinating um, about this sort of the state of the club right now. Um, you know, even when he says, I'm watching it, but Triple Seven still has a contract, that's, it, it, you know, it's sort of saying, well, they still have a contract, but they're not, they're not, you know, until that runs out, we can't really do anything ourselves. Um you know, maybe we'll be uniquely positioned to solve a lot of their problems for people, but we're just watching right now. Maybe he's waiting for a few of those problems to go away before he gets involved or tries to get involved. But also him saying that I suspect the problem that with Everton is it won't be available by the time we're ready for it. Indicating that maybe he knows that other people want to buy Everton Football Club. Who knows? Who knows? It's all very, very interesting. It's a very interesting development tonight. Um, and we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what happens. And as you know, we we just want this sorted out as fans, don't we? As Everton fans, we want this sorted out so we can get on with our our summer and you know the situation where the manager can buy people. We know who we have to sell, who we who we need to keep. That needs to be sorted out. At the moment, we really are in limbo as a football club, and no one really knows what's happening. So, yeah, we'll wait and see how this story develops, and you know. If it does develop, we'll obviously be covering it on Toffee TV. Uh, just one other bit of news today. Uh, Everton youngster Roman Dixon, right back, has been called up to play for the England under-20s. Um, they will be playing Sweden and Ireland. So, got a bit, good bit of news there because we've been worrying about whether we did have anyone who was ready to step up. And obviously that right back position... Um, has been a problem all season, hasn't it? You know, five different players have played in that position last season. So maybe we ha do have a youngster 
just about to come through who could maybe get an opportunity um, in the next 12 months. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But there you go. This has been the Everton News Daily. Make sure uh, make sure to check out some of the videos that we are releasing at the moment. The the uh, review of the season, and as we on we have looked at the defence, the midfield, the strikers. They'll be all be coming out over the next few days as well. We've broke those positions down. Uh, our player of the season award as well um, will be available over on Toffee TV Premier. Um, so make sure you check that. If you want all those videos first, they will be on Toffee TV Premier. If you want them without ads, that's over on Toffee TV Premier as well. So make sure you follow the link in the description and the, the QR code coming up on the screen. Now, if you want to become a Toffee TV Premier member, no better time. Lots of good exclusive content over there. If not, stick with us on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you later.